Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So this week's episode I want to speak to you about is how to handle panic. And this is something that I've experienced from time to time in my life. And it's really unpleasant when it comes along and it can throw you into complete turmoil. You can think that you don't have options, that things in life have conspired against you and all sorts of things. But what I want you to realize is that when you go into a panic about something, you start to activate your survival mechanisms and the reactions to anything that threatens your existence, which when you're in a panic, you have assumed that something in your external world is threatening your existence then you will start to either react in a fight, flight or freeze mode. And when you do that, the way the body works is it shuts all the non-essential things down. So one of the things it considers as non-essential is your higher thinking, your problem solving capabilities, your ability to allow inspiration into your life as well. And what it does is it sort of starts to go onto high alert and look and try to sift as quickly as possible through all the data and to find an escape route. The problem with this is that when you react from fear, the way we're created as humans, and I think that this is source or the divine's way of ensuring that we do slowly grow and become more conscious, is that when we react to anything in fear, we actually create the very thing that we fear. I've seen it so many times, even in my dogs. Um, I remember walking them. Unfortunately, I don't have them at the moment. This was a number of years ago. Um, I had one dog that I think had been sort of abused and whatever else. She wandered down my driveway once and was completely emaciated and kind of attached herself to us and she became our dog. So she was a little bit skittish, understandably, and quite sort of sensitive to the nuances around her and tended to sort of get quite panicky quite quickly. And then our other dog was completely spoiled. We'd had her since a puppy. <laughs> and she was just like an overgrown, spoiled brat. And when I used to walk them together, the skittish one used to shy away or overreact to any sort of slightest thing that was going on, which would then annoy the other dog. Um, and eventually the other dog would sort of snap at her or push her or shove her, which would make her more skittish and so on. Um, and I'm just saying, I mean, although I'm talking about dogs and them reacting in fear, it still creates the very thing that they fear. And if, if it does it for dogs, I can promise you it does it for humans as well. I've seen people who are sort of socially awkward and who fear being with big crowds. And as they go into those crowds, because they're fearful and because they feel awkward, their behaviours are exaggerated, which makes their reception into those big crowds of people less easy. And it exacerbates the things that they, they, they're already fearing. And the same goes from any decision or action that you choose from fear. And when we're panicking, we are in a massive space of fear. So the very first thing that you need to do when you find yourself panicking is to realise that you have all the time that you need. When we're in a panic, quite often, and this, I mean, I don't know what your circumstances are, so I'm not going to pretend that I do, and maybe your situation does call for immediate action. But quite often, when we're panicking, we feel like we have to do something immediately now. It's urgent, it has to be done, you know, this instant. But actually, if you take a deep breath, you'll realise that a lot of the time, nothing actually has to happen right now. And when you're in a panic, the most important thing to do is to actually try and calm yourself down, to get yourself into a good space. And you can do this, only you will know the way that works for you best. For some people, it's to go for a long drive or a long walk or go, and go for a run or go to the gym or listen to some music anything or read a good book or watch a movie. I mean, there's so many ways to distract you from what's going on. But the important thing is that it puts you into a better state and takes you out of your fear, sort of reactionary based fight, flight and freeze mechanisms. The other thing that is incredibly good, and I would highly recommend this to anyone who's in a state of panic, is breathing exercises. And um, one of the ones that I use regularly and that's worked for me numerous times is something called the 7-Eleven where you breathe in for the count of seven and you breathe out for the count of 11. And what it does is it soothes the sort of emotional states that you're in and it tells the body that everything's okay. And when you're telling the body that everything's okay, it can start to relax. It starts to take the 
focus away from survival um, and into actually being able to live. And in doing that, it allows you to then access those parts of your mind and your brain that allows you to um, find solutions that you might not otherwise have found. Um, I've also done an episode on um, inspired thoughts and how to access inspired thoughts. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes below as well. Because when you've got yourself into a great space and you are able to access your thoughts in a better way, we can't always solve the problems in our lives with the knowledge and our experience that we've had. Sometimes we need inspiration and there are certain things you can do to get that inspiration. And as I've said, I'll link the episode that I speak about that to you in the show notes. So if it applies to you, you can have a little listen to that as well. So the main thing to do with panic is to one, realise that you have time, um, unless obviously you don't. If it's somebody who's about to run in front of a car, please do something to stop it. But 90% of the time when we're panicking, it doesn't have to be addressed right here and now. So take your time. Take time to allow yourself to calm down, to allow yourself to find peace, and don't make decisions and make choices from that highly charged panic space. Because if you do, you'll be creating the very things that you fear. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have and you want to listen to next week's episode, which I'm going to be speaking about how some people use anger to get what they want and what to do about it if you're on the receiving end and what to do about it if you're that person, because it's not always beneficial to use anger in that way. And if that's of any interest to you, make sure you subscribe. Um, I also offer coaching to help people shift from the ego sort of space of fear and reaction and scarcity into a much more conscious, aligned, joyous space. And if you're interested in that, I've got all my details below and my social media links and my website, and you can contact me through there. And I also have a number of online programs as well that you can have a look at. Have a fabulous week and I'll see you next week. So much love from me to you. Bye bye.